Hello, everyone, and welcome back to a brand new special episode of the Collider Games podcast. My name is Dennis Din. I'm here with Joshua Vares. And also in studio, we've got a very special guest, Markiplier. Hi. People, you, you know him. Um, people, you have 24 million subscribers on YouTube. Mm-hmm. How long have you been doing YouTube for? Uh, seven and a half years. Seven and a half years. Coming up on eight in March nice. of next year. Yeah. And, and what got you into it? Was it something that you were looking to kind of promote uh, or uh, kind of like a, a career path? Or was it something that just like, hey, I, I'm just interested in making videos? My beginnings on YouTube start with misery and woe. Okay. <laughs> I had uh, – I was in the hospital recovering from my tumor removal. Oh. Just thinking about all the ways my life went wrong. I'd uh-huh. just been laid off from my job. My girlfriend broke up with me. Wow, this sounds very dramatic. It is all <laughs> true. Uh, it is true, yeah. actually. <laughs> I'm just making it dramatic. But yeah, I was in a low point. Um, I was in biomedical engineering school and I was thinking about, you know, the fact that I'd kind of drifted through life. It's very hard to drift through mm-hmm. engineering school, but I managed to do it. Um, I was a year away from graduating, but this uh, medical problem kind of set me back and I was like, man, I don't like what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I worked an internship and I was sitting at a desk and, you know, two hours of work for eight hour a day, like just really boring stuff, I, not fulfilling. So. You know, my brother, he told me about people do Let's Plays on YouTube, and I had watched, you know, Freddie Wong and Mm -hmm. people like that do sketch comedy and visual effects. I was like, that sounds so fun. Mm -hmm. That sounds so cool. I want to do that. The problem was I didn't know how to use a camera. So my brother told me about Let's Plays, and so I started out just playing video games. And, um, yeah, ever since then, I've found this weird purpose in my life and I've found fulfillment in just pushing myself to make cool stuff and uh, that led me to today. Yeah, which uh, speaking of cool stuff, you just launched this uh, video, interactive video, Mm -hmm. uh, under the YouTube Originals uh, program called A Heist with Markiplier, which I played. It was very fun. It's, I guess it's, I guess, I I don't know if this had anything to do with it, but like the, the closest thing I can come to is Bandersnatch mm-hmm. on Netflix where yeah. you start off on a video, you have a storyline, and then you can kind of choose which way you're going to go down a path. And you have 18 different endings on this thing, and it's 61 videos in total. Yeah, there's 31 endings. Oh, actually. oh, there is there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it's funny because a lot of people compare it to Bandersnatch. Yeah. It, it's actually funny. I've never watched Bandersnatch. Okay. Okay. Uh, but I get the concept. This is actually uh, based off of something that I did before mm-hmm. about – uh, February of 2017 mm-hmm. for Valentine's Day. Uh, and it was just an experiment that me and my friends did. We were just playing around, and in three weeks we shot an entire interactive story. Um, and I've always loved that type of storytelling mm-hmm. where the, the the viewer gets to decide where you go. Um, and it's not even an original concept. Mm-hmm. Like, it's been done for years, mm-hmm. like outside of video as well, in books. Um, yeah, choose your own adventure books. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And so uh, when it came to this one, I I know that a lot of people were comparing it to Banner Session. Yeah. I was like, I have no idea what yeah. you're talking about. I have no idea what that's going to be. Yeah. But at the same time, I just wanted to make something that was going to be fun, mm-hmm. like fun. And you did. You yeah. succeeded with that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you think so? I, I mean, I'm, I'm ha- I'd say I'm probably about halfway through. I haven't finished it. I got like four, maybe five decisions in. And I'm loving it. That's pulled me away from the couch just now. You think you're yeah. halfway through, you, fool. <laughs> you <laughs> well, that's, fool. that's great news, if anything. I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm happy about um, that. I, I don't want to spoil anything for anyone, but yeah, I, I played it a few times, and like the branches go off into way Weird. different and like different mediums, uh-huh. different ways and styles. Yeah. Uh, I, I just I don't want to spoil anything, but one had like music involved, and one had. A different uh, way of showing yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there was like a lot of different, and then I guess even yourself, like acting in different types of roles throughout yeah. this as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wanted to cover a whole wide variety because I it, it's it's my little pull the fast one on you, mm-hmm. pull the sneaky mm-hmm. on you. I 
I, I promoted it as mostly just about the heist, yeah. about the museum alone, because I didn't want anyone to know what the hell was going to happen after. And no spoils, no spoilers, <laughs> but we covered multiple different movie uh, genres as like inspiration. We wanted a more horror route while staying in the comedy theme. Uh, we have this ocean route. We have this zombie apocalypse route. Um, and then we have this other route that's, I can't even describe because it'd be spoilery, but, um, yeah, it was, it was really just a, a turn of imagination. I just decided mm -hmm. I want these choices to actually seem like they're taking you somewhere. And I think that's very important when it comes to giving the viewer some choice. They need to feel like it actually made a difference mm -hmm. and having it be wildly different outside of having video game style controls of knowing exactly what you did and remembering the variables and flipping switches on and off. If you're doing a video, you just have to showcase it in terms of something fantastical. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I think we did. So the previous video that you were talking about, you had done this before was the date one, right? Going yeah. on a date. And mm -hmm. then during that process, is it something you took to YouTube and said, this is what I want to do? Did they come to you and say, hey, we want to fund something, a project of yours. What would you like to do? Uh... I would love it if more people just came to me and said, I would love to fund your project. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be but, great. But honestly, that is actually what happened because yeah. YouTube has wanted me to do an original for a while. So uh, I didn't want to do just another show that like everyone else has done, not diminishing any <laughs> other YouTuber who's done a standard like sitcom or something yeah. like that. But I didn't want to do that. Uh, they approached me after I made this and I was like, maybe – Maybe I could make something like mm -hmm. this. I've got an idea. I don't have a script written. I'm not really a script writer, but I know we can do this from what we did. It was successful. It got a lot of views. It got just if, – if you look both at the views in terms of the – on the first video and like in the series as a whole, it's astronomical. Mm -hmm. This one especially is like just mind-boggling mm -hmm. numbers. Um, but I try not to focus on the numbers and I was like, this is good stuff. I think people will like this. It drove a lot of engagement and it's – just people had fun with it. Mm -hmm. um, so when I pitched this, uh, it was funny because I pitched it in June of last year and then Bandersnatch came out. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, hey, guys, maybe we should hurry up on yeah. it. <laughs> get, a, get, a, get a move on. Maybe yeah. we should get a move on. And then the wheels started turning mm -hmm. real fast. And then we just started going into production. And it was all in, f in line with our timetable that we had. Before, How long was but, production, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, from start to finish, we well, – Well, specifically just filming. Oh, f just, just filming? filming yeah. just, just filming? filming? Okay. Well, that was three weeks. Okay, because that, mm -hmm. that was very high energy. Like, the, you, you, how much <laughs> energy drinks and coffee were you on? Because that's what I think that's what I like about it is the, the decisions are quick. The videos are roughly between three to four minutes long. So yeah. you're, making, you're making those decisions fairly quickly. But you yourself have so much energy in these videos, which on I love, but man. <laughs> honestly, it was slower than I wanted it to be. I really? wanted it mm -hmm. to be even faster. I wanted the jokes to be quicker and quicker. Mm -hmm. uh, my big inspirations are like Naked Gun and mm -hmm. uh, the airplane. I, I saw a lot of, uh, yeah. a lot of influence yeah. for that, yeah. Yeah, those types of movies. I love those. And, and the things about those movies that there's always something happening, whether in the foreground or background, there's always a joke playing out and it's mm -hmm. always moving mm -hmm. very quickly. And I learned from first-person uh, perspective storytelling is things have to move fast because y you can't cut at all. You can't. It, it's, I mean, you can, but it's jarring. You, you yeah. have to hide it with like a, a wipe or something like that. Um, so I wanted it to be fast. But three weeks for filming was not enough time. We yeah. were pulling 16-hour days. Oh, my like God. We were yeah. working overtime every day. I had to, you know, direct and act. Yeah. And I had to, like, stop the take to, like, figure out the, the mm -hmm. how we're going to block it all out. And just taking the time to do that, we were rushed. But... Kudos to Rooster Teeth, the production company, mm -hmm. and the crew we had on there. Like, they pulled out all the stops. Nice. They didn't quit. They were so dedicated, and I am so grateful for the fact that they were. Yeah, yeah it looks like a very high-end production value. A lot of yeah. effort was put into it. A lot of really nice shots as well, like from a cinema, uh, like a, a, oh, a cinematography you. kind of point yeah. of view. Like, very interesting shots as well. Yeah. Like, very enjoyable. Um, that was a good old Phil yeah. J. Roy. He's a, a very good DP. Uh, he helped out a ton. Phil, love you to death. You did great. Because uh, we had to reuse a lot of sets. Yeah. You know, we did, like, especially in the sewers, we didn't have much, and all he did was, like, change up the lighting, change mm -hmm. up the approach. There's one scene in there where we go in 
we go out of it in one direction, and then we turn the camera around, flip th- the things on my right hand to my left, we shoot it going into it, and then we just flip the footage nice. in post. That's and actually amazing. No one can that's tell. No one that's has amazing. It's movie yeah. magic. I know, right? Movie magic. Right yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, uh, and so that that just came out this past week. Yesterday. Yesterday. Yeah, okay. yesterday. It's been barely 24 hours. Yeah, it's got like millions and millions of views already. <laughs> Dude, I, I don't usually talk about numbers, yeah. and I'm not trying to brag uh-huh. about this, but it, it blows my mind. Because uh, the first video, it has over 4 million views yeah. Yeah. in 24 hours, yeah. and that's stunning. That's crazy, yeah. Across the board, there's 61 videos, right? There's like 40 million views mm-hmm. across the board of all these v- videos that has happened in the past 24 hours. It was hitting 3 million views an hour. Wow. Just from the number of people that were hitting all these different videos. And it's like, and it was even higher before. They error corrected for duplicate views mm-hmm. because YouTube does it, auditing and stuff. This is after that. Yeah. It's, it's just nice. like, it, the numbers are so mind blowingly huge for me anyway, yeah. my channel. I know that. Other channels get those big are numbers still big time. numbers, no, matter, huge, no number. matter how you're looking at it. I'm like, my channel will never be the same. I will never be able to get this many numbers ever again. So a a year from now, you're going to be looking back and just be sipping on your whiskey, going, "How am I going to outdo myself again this back year?" In the old days, <laughs> yeah, I'll never do it. <laughs> and I know I'm very fortunate because my channel is very successful, and mm-hmm. I totally get that. And my numbers are perfectly fine. Yeah. But you know, this it distorts your perspective. Yeah. <laughs> it'll yeah. make things weird. It, um, without spoilers, is there a particular ending that you can get to that's the hardest out of them? Is there like one kind of like where you've got to really, you know? Yes. Um, it's more set up like, it's more set up like I meant to confuse people mm-hmm. because uh, without spoilers, you'll see what I mean. I have my two friends, Bob and Wade, you know Bob and Wade. I know Bob and Wade, yeah. yeah. Bob and Wade. Not personally. <laughs> yeah. That'd be weird. <laughs> but Bob and Wade, they're playing out this scene, and they're the identical character. But depending on which way you go there, they switch roles into the other uh, character. They're wearing the same costumes. And so I loved it because it played out exactly as I wanted. I wanted people to go like, no, it was Bob. Bob had the gun. No, mm-hmm. Bob was in the truck. And he's like, no, no, no. It was Wade. Wade was in the truck. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Are you crazy? And everyone was like, what are you talking about? It was Wade. And it's, I love that. So the difficult ending is down the second path, continuing down past that. Uh, we kind of tucked it away back there. Mm-hmm. But people have found pretty much everything pretty quickly. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, I mean, speaking of, like you were saying, there's a, you got a lot of uh, a lot of YouTubers in that as well. Yeah. A lot of good faces, a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've got Matt Pat, Rosanna Pantino. We've got Gavin and Dan from The Slow Mo Show. We've got uh, Aaron and Danny from Game Grumps. Uh, we've got Shmo Yoho. Mm-hmm. We've got the, the Gregory Brothers. They they made music for it. Uh, Day by Dave did some remixes. You know, uh, I've got my friends, Bob Wade, Ethan, and Tyler. I know I'm forgetting someone here mm-hmm. in that mix. But, man, I mean, for three weeks, it must have been, it must have been busy but fun, like, to have all these, like, faces in one place as well. Busy Everyone, but fun. Everyone, like, talking, you know. That is a perfect example busy of how but it was. Fun. Busy but fun. I, I love those moments when I get to roll into bed filled with memories. Mm. And I, I just know that, like, now, I, I knew then, that six months from then, I would be looking back, and those would be the best times of my life. And every time I've done a production like this and slid into bed exhausted, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. best time of my life. It's fulfilling, yeah. And you get that high. That, oh, yeah. That, that, the production high. After yeah. you're like, during the time, it's like, oh, my God, I'm so tired and frustrated. And, know, and then yeah. when you go to bed, you're And like, then post-production oh. starts. <laughs> oh, God. Post for such a slog. Like, it's like, I want to just let me at the computer. Let me do it all yeah. myself. But I, I trust these people. The editors were great. The post-production people were great. The special effects people were great. I don't know how to do special effects. So it was all great. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it came out really well. Uh, there's a lot of action scenes as well. Where, did you find any difficulty with some of those action scenes? I mean, did you hurt yourself at all? I had to fall down a lot, but yeah. no, <laughs> it's fine. I'm sturdy. I'm built like a brick. I, like I, I can take a few hits, uh, but I, I'm more than happy to do that. We were relatively safe across the board, uh, but yeah, no, it was it was fun. I loved being. Oh, well, spoilers. No, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> you can't you can't ruin it for me, Mark. <sighs> No, that's no fun. You're right. You're right. I can't. I can't say anything about yeah. it. But I did some stunts. I did do some stunts. But that's all I'll say about it. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the the real fun of it is you go into it, you go a different path, you have an ending, but you just go play it again, and it's you wind up in a totally different place. Yeah. It's unlike 
what you went for before. Yeah. See, that's I think that's the difference between this and a lot of other projects is and, and this is what I wanted. I wanted people to play it and want to see the other endings. Mm. And and that's what I'm getting and that's why it's so beautiful and that's why the numbers are astronomical mm-hmm. from the people just going back and checking other paths and seeing every nook and cranny is just people want to see it all. And, and with something like, again, I haven't seen Bandersnatch and I'm not trying to poo-poo on Bandersnatch mm-hmm. at all. I, I I don't care. The more the merrier. Mm-hmm. I want more interactive storytelling. But from what I know, it's more like you get your ending and that's your ending It wraps up your story and you don't want to see the rest of it. And there are some that are like, yeah, I want to see every possibility, every configuration. And it's like for my project, it's not about like the intricacy of your ending. It's Mm -hmm. about seeing all the fun that you could have. You you can have one path and get to an end and you'll be like, that was fun. And then you get to go on a completely different path. And it's an entirely new experience. Has nothing to do with the experience you just have. And it's just as fun. It's literally all about the journey. It is. Yeah. It is absolutely. And we make that joke. In there. <laughs> <laughs> but then, then you get like more anxious when you make a decision. Because I know when I got to the end, uh, each video, I'm like, well, this, if I choose this one, even if it's just a left-right turn type of thing, it's yeah. like, well, this can take me totally in a different area and this one can take me in a, a, a you know where am i going to end up on this one yeah yeah absolutely i learned how impulsive i was because when, <laughs> when you give, a, give give the people the options you're like talking about the options kind of explaining them i remember one of the options i just saw it i was like click i know <laughs> I didn't, yeah i didn't even like wait for you to describe what it was i was like that one i want it yeah, absolutely. yeah. and also like sometimes when you just look at the thumbnail uh-huh. of like what the mm-hmm. next one sometimes like, you'd base it on that. the thumbnail absolutely. of what you saw yeah. I, I knew that it had to be like I was really thinking about what what screen grab I was going to use for a thumbnail. What what am I going to do with the naming convention for it? Like all of this is like very delicate balance to try to get people to make even choices. And there are some times where I won. Like no spoiler or spoilers, but the first choice is you are trying to get out of the museum and you either go out guns blazing yeah. or sneaky. And so that being the first choice had to be the most even possible mm-hmm. because the it's two. That's it. One first video, two. So I can't have that be an uneven split at the first one. So yeah. thinking about the thumbnail, thinking about the rationality between making – even when I was doing the take, even like making Guns Blazing seem cool and making Sneaking Out seem cool at the same time. Even choice. Uh, we didn't nail it on everyone, but we were pretty close across the board. Nice. What did you go with your first decision, Dennis? I went Guns Blazing the first oh, yeah. time. Yeah. 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 Just because I thought – Okay, in games, I'm I'm never the stealth guy. I'm always yeah. like I'm gonna go fight whoever. Barbarian bashing. Yeah. Down yes, the exactly, yeah. exactly. But the second time, I went stealth. I was like, I want to go down this rabbit right, hole right. and see where this goes. Yeah, what leads you. Oh, so. I, exact same. Well, I just wanted to see him go guns blazing. It wasn't <laughs> even about what I wanted to do. I was like, I want to see Mark go guns blazing. <laughs> I don't yeah. want to see him sneak. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty cool. I edited that one myself, and just it was, it was just really fun. I like it was so hard to explain this joke that I had in there with like the pulling off the glass oh, yeah. and trying to like. That was such a nice shot. I know. I, that was <laughs> such a nice shot. That's the shot I was talking about as well. With the that was I like that. Oh, uh, thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, thank you. But just trying to like getting the entire crew to wrap their head around this concept was difficult. And and not saying that the crew is dumb no, in any yeah, way, yeah. but this is a weird thing for people. Traditional yeah. yes. media, like okay, we need coverage. We need a shot, B shot. We need we need two cameras. We need uh, like different things. How's it gonna? Not one. Talk to it. Yeah. Look in it. You are a, trying to explain to the camera guy that he was a character. It was like you yeah. are the person, man. Yeah. Shake yeah. your head when so I'm talking give to you. Some personality <laughs> yeah. to it. Yeah. But uh, no, they got they got behind it. And even this weird idea is there was this adage on set that was just like. Mark knows. That was the quote. Mark knows. Yeah. Like, if anyone had any doubts, Mark knows just because they had it all up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the director. The director's got to have all the answers to all the questions, even if they don't have all the answers to all the questions. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah, I once had to... Uh, I, I once uh, started in something that I wrote, and that was already complicated as is. I could imagine for you having so much going on, and then somebody asks you a question, and you're like, Mark the actor, Mark the director, and you're just like brain frying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it was crazy. I, I got in the bad habit of explaining from the beginning to everybody. So someone was like, where does this plant go in the set dressing? Like their art department. And I'm just like, okay, imagine. <laughs> imagine. <laughs> We're entering from here. Boom, turn. See the plant. Yeah. It's like that That's, kind of I, 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 Now I want a behind the scenes. Yeah. Now I, I mean, like. Now I want that. <laughs> there is. There is a behind the scenes. Video. That's going to be uh, very interesting to, yeah. to see all the different. Well, we stuff, hid a secret Easter egg hunt in it. So if you find like, it, you can find. The I feel video. like Danny and Aaron would be very uh, chaotic behind the scenes. 
Oh, uh, they actually... <laughs> spoilers. <laughs> on set. <laughs> so they are voice only in their oh, role. Oh, okay. Unfortunately. That's still cool, though, yeah. Cool. Yeah. They were busy, but mm. they made accommodation to voice some roles. Cool. All right, guys. So uh, for those of you watching or listening, check out A Heist with a Markiplier. It's streaming free. It's not like... You got to pay anything. Free. Just go to his YouTube channel, YouTube.com. Unlike the, yeah. Com Unlike com the Bandersnatch. Com. You yeah. got to go, pay, yeah. go to pay to watch the Bandersnatch. Yeah, take that Netflix. Not to Netflix. see Markiplier. <laughs> calling you out. Yeah. Um, uh, play the game. I don't know. It's like a game, video, watch the video. It's 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 it's, it's like a telltale game. Between, game yeah. Yeah. What people have been saying is like play yeah. a heist with yeah. Markiplier. It's like, do you want to – I love this. People watch it together in groups and like, do you want to play a heist with Markiplier together? Or that's like, cool. Yeah, that, and then you oh. do it like, oh, community decisions, right? Like, that's okay. How, that's how we did the premiere. We uh, Sorry to keep talking about no, this. No, sorry. But we rented out a theater in Austin, Texas for cast and crew. Nice. And we just had people shouting out which way where, where to go. go. Yeah, it's so fun. I nice. loved it so That's much. That's amazing, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. Well, while we're on the topic, I know you. we want to move over. I've got a very uh, interesting question to ask you because I've been watching you throughout your career. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed how your voice towards your audience has changed over the, couple, over the years, if you will. Like, I feel like, I mean, I guess within your story, if you will, Markiplier, you had to become aware of the influence you had over your audience. I think you were always aware of your audience, but now you're a lot more aware of the influence you have on your audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you And I feel too. like, yeah, the, the way you uh, direct the audience is very different nowadays, and I, I, I like that. It's very mindful. Something I wish politicians had. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure there's a lot we wish politicians had. Yeah. Uh, but not to talk about that. Um, yeah, it, it's true. No one who is a YouTuber now mm -hmm. grows up through it knowing how much impact they have. Mm. I hate the word influencer, but in some ways it is apt you because have influence. Yeah. Exactly. Everything we say is seen through a box. No one who watches knows me personally. So I have to be very careful with how I'm presented and understanding. It's like a group psychology experiment. Mm. You have to know how you're being like understood. And, and it's not about trying to control the message and trying to control how they perceive you. Some people do that and some people are very good about that. For me, it's very much like I want people to know who I am. So mm. I need to be as upfront and authentic as possible. Your videos can times. get very personal as well, which mm -hmm. is I like. You you definitely put yourself there on camera. Yeah, yeah. I try and some people call it out as a weakness, I think. It's a, oh, no, it's it's a strength. It's my biggest strength. I completely agree with that because P people who see it as a weakness t tend to I think have a bit of weakness in them, you know what I mean? Mm, uh, maybe. Like, I wouldn't go I've, far as yeah. that. Yeah. I've never never been a fan of people who have gotten hard from life beating them down. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, honestly, that's that's pretty apt, but it, for me it, it's more just like I I can't see any other way of doing it. Mm -hmm. Me with my heart on my sleeve saying exactly what I think in the exact way I think it at the time, even if I might be wrong. I want people to know who I really am, not a controlled image of who I am. It's, I want people It's very to, noble, yeah. Yeah. And and sometimes it might get me in trouble, sometimes it might not, but I'd like to but think I'm a good person. But you can sleep at night. I can sleep at night. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. I'd like to think I'm a good person and I want people to know like that side of me. Nice. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, not why we're here. Video games, right? <laughs> well, video games, which, you know, you, this is where you got your, your start in, yeah. uh, on YouTube doing uh, a lot of Let's Play videos. You did uh, a lot of what, indie horror mm -hmm. games. Um, hopefully, maybe we, if we have time later, we can get you on to uh, uh, something over there sure. on VR. Have you tried VR before? I've tried it a bunch, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so let's move on to some topics. Death Stranding. So... We're not going to do a review. The review embargo is up when this video or this video and this podcast come out. Uh, we have a separate video talking about that. They did release a launch trailer. It's like seven minutes mm -hmm. long. News that it's coming on PC. Um, what is your overall kind of impressions or take on this game? Are you a big Hideo Kojima fan? Not honestly, yeah. no. Uh, and it's not for a fault of the game. I think the game will be fun. I mean, yeah. I think it will be very interesting. Um, but those types of games, the ones where they're an, an extremely embedded narrative experience mm -hmm. in and, and to this one's credit, it seems more open world. It seems like it has more choice in there and, and like you can pee in the river if you want to. <laughs> that was an interesting thing there. But um, I, I have such little time to play games yeah. and mm -hmm. those are such heavily invested, heavily involved, very nuanced, intricate games. They're art. Mm -hmm. And I am not diminishing the art in any way by saying they're not to my taste. It's just like the the art of the game. 
I don't have time to appreciate and I haven't had time to really dig my teeth into. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like those type of games. I, I enjoy those games, but they do get overwhelming mm. because like uh, I've mentioned before, Red Dead Redemption 2 I played last year is one of my favorite games of all time. Mm-hmm. 80 hours, like yeah. 80 hours, spent 80 hours. I mean, look, I enjoyed every minute of it, but that was 80 hours <laughs> gone. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we spoke about it last week as well. People just don't have, I mean, kids, yeah, but people like just don't have the time to play these video games. I mean, even the companies are looking at the their release dates and how often they're releasing games and they're like, we need to stop releasing them as often. First of all, let the, the games we are releasing come out, let them make the money that it's worth before pushing out another game. And the people like, mm-hmm. who's going to drop down, like I said last week, who's going to drop down like, what, hundred and like $180 for three games in a week, you know? Mm-hmm. If like three AAA titles are coming out in one week, who's going to drop down for that, mm-hmm. you know? Did you did you watch the trailer, the launch trailer? The, the new launch trailer? Yeah. No, I have not. Okay, no. it's, it's seven minutes long, and as someone who's played the game, even though I'm not done yet, watching that trailer already spoiled <laughs> some stuff for me. Oh, it's, yeah? it's very spoiler-filled. Oh, wow. Like, I'm like watching, I'm like, I haven't even gotten that far in there. I've already played like seven hours of the game, I'm like, I haven't gotten that yeah. far, and I was like, "You're you're spoiling a bunch of stuff." This is a hot take. Me. I think uh, I think a lot of people are going to be disappointed with this. I think a lot of uh, Kojima uh, Kojima fans are going to. I think half of the the fanboys for Hideo Kojima are going to stand by this, love it for the product that it is. It is like you said, a piece of art. Um, but I think a lot of people are not going to get what they're expecting. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know, I think there's going to be, and then it's also going to I think find a whole new audience. Mm. Uh, either way, the the marketing's been done. The game's going to sell well. We know that. I don't know uh, what the reviews are going to be like afterwards, or more so the people's reviews. I, I think it's going to be a divisive game. Yeah. But uh, uh, all right. Uh, second one, the Jedi Fallen Order trailer came out. Mm. Uh, did you see that? I saw parts of it. Yeah. Okay. Very, very, I'm very. I'm just generally very excited. I know we covered it uh, a couple weeks ago as well. The gameplay mechanics. Yes. It's just, um, it's it's time. I want it now. <laughs> like, give me a good Star Wars game, please. <laughs> Have you been playing any Star Wars games at all? No, no, not honestly. I've seen some old trailers. I haven't seen mm-hmm. the newest trailer yeah. for that one yet. Uh, like I said, no time. Yeah. People think I'm a gamer. I'm probably a fake gamer at this point. I haven't played a game. Like, <laughs> well, I, no, I mean, the thing is, is like, uh, like someone like, we just had uh, Kevin Smith on our comic book shopping show. This mm-hmm. is where we take... Uh, celebrities to a comic book store and then whether or not they're a comic book fan or not uh, our host Koi kind of introduces them to different comics and Kevin Smith is known as you know uh, a big comic book guy and he talks about comics all the time but he you know even in that episode he's like he's been so busy with stuff Mm -hmm. that he hasn't kept up with the latest stuff and I imagine you're the same way where you have So much, I'm sure this project that took you over a year to do with a heist, like, had so much of your time dedicated to that. It consumed my life. Yeah. I mean, if if I could get a game, if I could get one day just to play games, I would be so happy. Yeah. But I have not had a single day by itself in ages. And yeah. I, I imagine when you do have one of those days and you're like, you know what, I'm going to sit down today, get some pizza, get some snacks, play some video games. Mm-hmm. You're going to be sitting there and you're going to be like, oh, I should be streaming this. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. You're gonna That's be, what happens. You're going to get guilty. It's yeah. so poisonous. Yeah. It, it's so poisonous. Oh, like, could be yeah. making content. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Did you take a vacation after? Uh... I did. I, well, kind of a vacation. Yeah. I I went to Korea okay. for a month. Nice. I had been meaning to go. I have family there. I'm trying to learn the language. Um, mm-hmm. And I was just living in Seoul for a month. And I was like, I'm just doing this. I'm immersing myself. I am getting to the point where I can get confident speaking it, even if it's broken. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I just I did that for a month. So I was able to get away. But even then. It chased me down. <laughs> it did? It chased me down. I had to fly from Seoul, Korea to Austin, Texas for a two-day intensive sound mixing session uh, and then fly immediately all the way back. Like, we got to do ADR, Mark. I did see you did shoot a video in Korea where you were trying to learn Korea and, yeah. and I guess there was an instructor there. Yes. Yeah. Uh, try it. Yeah, so that was uh, the guy from Talk to Me in Korean. Yeah, Hanu. Uh, he uh, he basically runs this whole company that uh, helps people learn Korean, Korean and Koreans learn English. It is uh, very effective and it's really good stuff. They have great resources. Anyone that's trying to learn Korean, this is not a plug because mm-hmm. a lot of their stuff is free. Mm-hmm. 
well, it's basically a plug, but Talk to Me in Korean is a great resource. Uh, but that being said, I tried to record some videos there, and I started a lot of videos, and then I just never followed up mm-hmm. with it because I was very busy just trying to learn the language and trying yeah. to, like, take time to myself away from video mm-hmm. creation. And I ended up getting quite bored. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was, wow. I was really bored. <laughs> um, was that your first time in Korea? Or? No, I've, I've been throughout my life okay. uh, like uh, in five-year gaps. You know, when yes. I was five years old, 10 years old, 15 years old, 20, and then now, you know, I've gone for two years in a row. Uh, but, yeah, I've, I have family out there that I've never really talked to because, you know, not many of them speak much English, yeah. if at all. Uh, so I was like, yeah, I want to learn. I need to learn. There's this huge segment of my family that I've ignored for so mm-hmm. long. So, yeah, let's learn. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah. yeah. You're going to get yourself on uh, Duolingo? I have done Duolingo. Uh, nothing to Duolingo's discredit, but uh, it's not the best for Korean. Yeah. It is good for getting started with Korean, certainly, but not the best. Mm-hmm. They claim it's the best. <laughs> I don't think it's the best. I just, I like their Isn't con- it like, like Rosetta content, yeah. Stone, Duolingo, yeah. like all this? Yeah, there's nothing better than just learning from a Korean oh, person. For sure, yeah. 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 I, it, for me, it's I find it motivating because it's, um, you want to beat your friend's top scores as well. That is helpful. Like, it does push me to, like, learn a bit more because I'm like I can't I can't let my friend Andrew know more Japanese than me no yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I, will, yeah. I will not let this stand for this you know yeah there's nothing wrong with Duolingo mm-hmm. and I wanted to make that very clear in case I get a future brain yeah. <laughs> <laughs> future but, yeah there's nothing wrong with Duolingo and I think Duolingo is great because any learning is better than no learning yeah. mm-hmm. period if you're not learning at all you are not doing yourself any credit and Duolingo is very good at getting you to learn just a little bit mm-hmm. like getting you in the door opening it up for you and hopefully that gets you into enjoying the culture and and once you start liking the culture of a language, you're set. You're going to learn it. Like, that's it. So if you can get your foot in the door. Yeah, the basics are the most important. I speak, like, conversational Mandarin. Uh-huh. Um, and my girlfriend is actually – she's more fluent in Mandarin than English. And so mm-hmm. I have to speak to her in Mandarin. And because I have that base of the basics, I'm not good at all. Mm-hmm. I have a very Americanized accent. Mm-hmm. But talking to her, like, it's so much easier because I know at least – the the fun the foundation of everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so. me and my cousin. Uh-huh. He knows just a bit of English. I know just a bit of Korean, but together we yeah. can we, we can work it out. <laughs> <laughs> Meet halfway. Yeah, um, yeah. So uh, Jedi Fallen Order launch trailer coming out soon. What was it November fifteenth? Mm-hmm. The game. The, 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 yeah, the game's coming out the 15th or the 16th. It's coming out in a couple... No, the 15th, you're right. Yeah. It's coming out the 15th, 16 days from today. Um, it, it's really going to be the only... I mean, uh, unless The Mandalorian does really good, it's probably going to be the only good Star Wars thing we're getting this year. <laughs> Let's be honest. Oh, you're not <laughs> looking forward to Episode Nine? No, I saw Episode Eight and I was like, I'm not going to watch Episode Nine. <laughs> uh, you're on that train. I just... Man, like, what did they do to the Jedi? Why did they have to do the Jedi so dirty where they made them so weak? Like, these badass, amazing people... Oh... Anyways, that's that's like a whole nother conversation yeah. to have. Um, I'm I'm also I'm also excited for the uh, Obi Wan. Uh, is it is going to be a series, right? Yeah, limited oh, yeah. series. I'm very, very excited about that. Yeah, I watched an interview lately where he was like, "It's so difficult to keep it uh, to myself and not tell people." Meanwhile, we're all like, "We knew it was coming. Come on, it would have been stupid for them not to make it." <laughs> yeah, that's um, another thing besides video games sucking time is yeah. television series. Mm-hmm. Uh, Streaming services all abound with mm-hmm. Disney Plus coming out. Yeah, that's well. true, yeah. Um, no, I mean, I think the game's going to do great. And what, they said they have another Star Wars game. When they want to come out with another Star Wars game before 2021. Yes, because so. they're working on, I think, a Star Wars game, another Star Wars game and a Dragon Age game. Did you ever play Dragon Age? Love Dragon Age. Yeah, yeah so they're they're making a new one. But they're saying it's not coming out until twenty past twenty twenty two. They might do it early twenty twenty two. Well, their their fiscal year for twenty twenty two would start in twenty twenty one, like somewhere around March, if I read that correctly. Yeah. So but we it, might get it into next year, but probably beginning twenty twenty two. Still Bioware. Yeah. Yeah. Still Bioware. Yeah. yeah. See, that's a big problem I have with Bioware is with these long five plus year development oh, cycles. Yeah. Is like they could make amazing things. But also it can go very wrong, and it's gone very wrong in the past few long development cycles of theirs. And it just gives me concern mm-hmm. uh, with that. Because they had the opposite problem with Dragon Age 2, where they rushed it. They did it in like a year and yeah, I didn't, what it was. Yeah, I didn't care for 2. Yeah. I, I didn't enjoy it. I still think number one is a masterpiece. Oh, yeah. And then Inquisition, I mean, he knows I've been 
replaying Inquisition for like the fifth time the past I week. I never finished it because right about when it came out is when I started taking YouTube very seriously. Yeah. Oh, there you go, man. Yeah, so I just found out it. they added a multiplayer to that. Like, I was playing, I've been, I went back to Dragon Age Inquisition, went to the main menu, and there's an option that says multiplayer. I always find it weird, those type yeah. of games that have multiplayer. Like, yeah. it's like a big, long, single campaign, and then they have multiplayer. Yeah, like multiplayer. How does that even work? I don't, I don't know. know. I and mean, especially it's not an FPS. You know that, that's I mean? how I felt about uh, Final Fantasy XV, and then they released their multiplayer mode, and I was like, how are they going to make it work? And it, I, I liked it. It worked. Yeah. It's, I'd say Dragon Age is similar because you're in a party of four people, so you can be up to four people just slaying dragons together. Oh, it's know? co-op? Yeah. It's, uh, yeah I, so, I love so, co-op. Okay. Well, I, don't, I haven't played it yet because I've still been trying to finish the main story, but essentially when you go to multiplayer, you have to start a whole new character. I don't know if it's got its own story, but I'd imagine it's you and then your, your three other friends, whatever classes they want to be. But I'm assuming it's a side mission. It's not the main mission, right? Because the main mission is way too big for... Uh, I, it's so hard to get to play games at the same time your friends are playing yeah. games uh, that yeah. you it could do be... a 40-hour quest together. That would... It be sounds awesome, but in theory... but. I'm sure. actually coordinating that. Would I'm be sure they use the tough. same resources, but probably a, like a different storyline, if you will. Yeah. Like they'd use a lot of the bigger maps and like go out and do the combat, mm-hmm. but probably its own. It's, it's, it's got to be. be its own thing, yeah. But that would like, n- there was no like news around that or whatever. Like I just turned on my PlayStation one day and there it was. And I was like, what? Okay. I mean, That's cool. interesting. But um, yeah, Bioware. Um, I was actually, I was, when I was reading that article, I was like, man, well, like, why so long for another Dragon Age game? And then I remembered Anthem happened, and I was like, oh, yes. right, Anthem. That, that, was, that did not work out very well for them. They no. spent, um, what, I think six or seven months in production for that game, which is like, no, no, I lie. They were in their full production length. I, I might be wrong with this. Look me up on <laughs> YouTube. Uh, I think it was eight months production, and only four of that months was spent working on the game. It was like it was bad, man. Like even the people working on the game were just like, "No, this is not gonna end well." Hmm. Yeah, I think game companies in general are starting to learn that. Like they Cr- need a, crunch time. They need to watch out with that. Yeah, as well, you know? they need to stop trying to force games to deliver dates mm-hmm. and instead let the games. Well, well now uh, we've got a finish. bunch of delays, which is great news because it means that they're learning that we, the people playing the games, are okay with waiting a couple extra months if yeah. it means you making it better. You like know? like with Doom Eternal getting pushed back. Yeah. I'm fine with as that. As long as it's when I, it comes yeah, out. I can <laughs> wait. I get it from a business standpoint. Losing the holiday date yeah. is a big deal. Yeah. But having a bad game, especially like when you have IP like that, like Doom, mm-hmm. they've yeah. taken missteps before, and it like it's it's hard to come back from that. They're they're just so lucky that Doom has so much nostalgia. But think something like Anthem, who's gonna give that a second chance? No, no, no one did, and apparently yeah. it's okay now. But no one's gonna no one's gonna go. No back one's gonna to go it. back. Yeah. Even if they fix it after the fact, the the hype's gone. Yeah, the, that's the what happened gone. with Fallout seventy six. They supposedly oh. made it better after, but who's going back. I haven't touched yeah. it since And now they put launched. that subscription fee on there. Yeah, that was a whole fiasco that we yeah, talked about like last week. Making people pay like $100 a year for a game that no one wants to play. Yeah. yeah. And that's why I said Doom, Doom Eternal, they're, they're, I think their shares need that to be a good game. Yeah. Also, you know what? I'm, I think Doom can do that because it's even though it's a very large title, it's not one of the like the big, big ones that when they drop, like they're going to swallow everything up, you know, like a Last of Us Part Two or so- something like that, Cyberpunk 2077. So Doom has, Eternal has their fans. And then so whenever they're going to release it is when the Doom fans are going to buy it and they don't have to compete against all that's the true, other yeah. titles that are coming out mm. during the holiday season. Anybody that's been playing season. Doom has been playing it since like the 90s. We're cool with waiting. We've been we've been playing them for like, you know, 10 plus years. We're okay with waiting, you know, yeah. it's fine. Yeah. Um, I think the multiplayer is going to be kick-ass as well. I enjoyed the multiplayer on Doom. So that's something, I want to see them push that further with Doom Eternal, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. I want to see them take that more seriously or like uh, spend more time on it after the game comes out, if you will. Yeah. yeah. I didn't play much of Doom's multiplayer. It was, it was it was fun. I'm not into like yeah. competitive. It, it remi- much. Re- reminded me of like Unreal Tournament, like yeah. way back, like old school Unreal, like kind of like Quake Three, Quake Arena, that kind of. Vibe. I played a little bit of the newest Quake online, and, mm. and I used to play Quake Three Arena mm. all the time, Same. all the time. But when I was playing this one, it's like everyone's so good now, 
Everyone's so good at the lightning gun. I can't track anybody. It's Real gun yeah. headshots from across the map. I'm like, I I can't compete anymore. <laughs> I'm out of practice for so many years. I, my skills just aren't what they that's, used to be. Yeah, that, that's when you go and you re-download Quake 3 and you, you play against the bots, bots and you're yeah. like, yeah. Drop them down <laughs> easy. Yeah, you feel yeah, like it's, that. it's the early 2000s. You're in a basement at yeah. a LAN party. You're like, let's do this. Yeah, that sounds, oh, like, sorry, my co- that's, that sounds like my Call of Duty experience where like I don't play Call of Duty multiplayer anymore. I just mm-hmm. play the single because... I would just hop in multiplayer, bam, dead, yeah, bam, dead, like two seconds, three seconds, yeah. and it just wasn't fun anymore. I barely have time to play it. I definitely don't have time to get good at it. Like, yeah. There's, there's no way. I think that's the one thing that, and this is a very unpopular opinion, this is the one thing that Fortnite did right this season with adding the bots in, was that there are so many professional players playing that game and streamers playing that game that I bump into a player and they've already built like a castle within like less than a minute, like, well, not, not even like a couple seconds, and I'm still standing there with my little gun going, oh, crap. Yeah, yeah. So they put the bots in, at least then it like, depending on your skill level as how many bots are in the game. Mm-hmm, so you can yeah. get better and you stop uh, bumping into them. But it's nice, like like you said, like if you're just popping in for five minutes, you don't want to get devastated. It ruins the game for you. Yeah. You're not going to have fun if everyone's professional. I didn't even know they added bots in. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, cool. Some people hated that. It was an unpopular thing, but I think it's working out for them. I mean, they've got to understand there is a curve to every game. Exactly. Like a skill curve. Like, yeah. And once a game reaches a certain maturity, the skill curve becomes unachievable to mm. new players. Yeah. So it has to be some kind of inaccessible. So it's not scary. Like it, it, if it's intimidating for people to join in, and even if it's not like scary, scary, if it's just like, oh, Oh God, it's frustrating because I don't have time. Like that level, like having some means, and bots is not a bad way to do it because it doesn't destroy. It, push, the, it pushes you to get better as well. Exactly, you know, yeah. it doesn't destroy the core game experience. It, it 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 introduces a little bit of a handicap for some people, but not everybody because there's still other players in there, right? Correct. There's, yeah. still there's still other players. Still other like, players, and you're still competing like to win. So you know, I I think it's a good move for the longevity of the game. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I mean, the bots are only there the first five minutes of the game. They get killed out within the first five minutes or so. But so end game, you're still playing against real people, yeah, if you will. But yeah. it gives you that thing of like not landing and getting wrecked with like right away. Mm-hmm, you can get yeah. some loot. I do hope that they make, if they're going to keep the bots in, they make them a bit tougher because sometimes a bot will just stand in front of you, won't even take its gun out, it'll just stand there <laughs> like <laughs> like dance or something. You're just like, okay, time to kill you, man. Uh, yeah, you want a little bit of a challenge. Yeah. You don't want it to be like I'm super a, yeah. duper I used easy. to play a lot of Dota and used to play against bots to make me better because some of the, like, the AI, like... <sighs> Some of that AI is crazy. I mean, even looking at the one that Elon Musk made, that his crew made for Dota, that was like, that was insane. Um, but great for training. Great for training, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, another announcement I just saw today was uh, something we're big into, which is VR here. Vader Immortal Episode 3 mm-hmm. is coming out November 21st, which is interesting because that's fairly soon. And the second episode took so long. Um, when the quest came out, it was in, I think, May. First episode was a, a debut title, and then it took them all the way until, what, just a month ago? I was, I was about to say, yeah. It was only a month ago episode two came out. So all three episodes are coming out within the first year. Yeah, which with, I within, expected anyways, like but I just expected like a more like every two or three months one yeah. would come out, and now it's like one came out and it took a long time for the second one to come out, and now the third one. Do you think they're trying to line it up with all the other Star Wars releases? We got Probably. Like, yeah, I mean, that would make sense to me. We got the movie come out. We have yeah. Mandalorian, the Jedi new, Fallen Order exactly, as well. Yeah. Um, you said you were, you played a lot of VR? Yeah, I played the first one of those. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, good, good. I, I think the control mechanic of it is novel. Yeah. I, I think it's kind of cool. Um, I didn't like climbing up all... Th- I, I get it. I get it. You can climb in the game. Don't make me climb everywhere. <laughs> like, uh, but, you know, I think I think it's good. Um I think there's a lot of potential in VR, but yeah, I get it. This seems like total a business move on Disney's side. Mm-hmm. I know they want Star Wars to be a big franchise like Marvel, and I get it, and I get the strategy behind it, but at the same time, I'm just not that excited about mm-hmm. it. You know, it's like a VR. Yeah, you get to see Vader. Mm-hmm. I get it. But they can only ride Vader's coattails for so long like the, mm-hmm. until they mil- milk all the goodness out of that character, and then another dried husk of a character falls by the way. I wonder if they're going to... They've got to eventually then come up with a new Vader, if you will, because no one's going to be lining up to see Kylo Ren anytime soon. Well, that's what they tried. To they do. tried to do I, that. They tried. I know. They're, that's what I'm saying. They're going to have to do something else, I guess. You know, after episode nine, I guess we'll see. Mm-hmm. I mean, just how do you make someone cooler than Vader was? I don't know. Like, that's so, that's difficult, man. Yeah. You know, he's got such a great story as well. Because you, you, we got to see his origin, you know. Mm-hmm. Do you ever watch, uh, what is it? Was it Nerd Riders uh, video on Darth Vader? 
No. They talked about, he basically discussed how Vader, if you take the amount of screen time they actually had in, in A New Hope, the first Star Wars, is like minimal. Like, mm-hmm. like he's not on screen a lot, and mm-hmm. but he has such a large looming presence over mm-hmm. the whole movie. Yeah, yeah. I like that. I mean, it's a very big mystery element to it. I think that that's what worked well for it, you know what I mean? There's also the fact that the, the constant talking of Vader but never seeing him was very, like, ominous, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, it's it's like mm-hmm. any good horror game. The less you see of the monster, the better. Exactly. Like you, yeah. you have to build up, let your mind build up all the little gaps. Like all of, all of Vader's like backstory and like mysterious and why he's so scary is like a lot of it's just built in the viewer's head. Like, oh my god, he seems so scary. I bet he's killed tons <laughs> of children. Yeah. Like you don't know that until <laughs> well, episode three comes yeah. out, and then you find out that he did. He yeah. did. Yeah. Well, those poor young Padawans. The younglings. Yeah. The younglings, yeah. What other games have you played in, in VR? Um, I mean, I do some Beat Saber occasionally. I've done a few fitness games here and there. I, I've played, you know, most of the zombie shooter style mm-hmm. games because they're at least comfortable to play and they're reliable entertainment. Um, I've played uh, the the Epic Games one. I forget what the name of it. The Robo Recall. Oh, okay. I played that. So I played a smattering of mm-hmm. games. Have you played any horror stuff? Because horror kind of lends itself to this VR stuff. Only for video. Okay. Like, this is all in my own spare time that I played. But yeah, tons of horror games for video. Five Nights at Freddy's VR yeah. was a very good VR title. I think it. I still haven't tried that yet. I really want to. Yeah. It fits the VR very mm. well, just because you know Five Nights at Freddy, you stand in one yeah. spot. Makes sense. They all come at you. Like it's it works. Yeah. Uh, so and then other horror games that I played, I can't remember the names of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I just find the VR very interesting as a platform for not just gaming, but interactive storytelling mm-hmm. um, and just the different things that you can do with it compared to regular console gaming. Mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of potential in VR. I think it's still a ways away mm-hmm. from getting to its pinnacle. Um, the Quest is a huge step forward. Yes, it is a huge step huge up. Huge yeah. step forward for it. I love the Quest. Just being able to be like, I want to go in VR. And not yeah. going, I'm going to go in VR. Oh, sh- my sensor. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, up firmware update. Like, you know, doing that. Like, Tripping over cables. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, exactly. that's, I love that. Yeah. When I tried that, I, I, I told you as well, Dennis, the first time I t- uh, put on the Quest, I had this big moment, like, in my in, in my life, if you, were, if you will, where I was like, this is it. The part where I put it on and I could see the room through there and I was drawing just the guardian circle. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is it. I was like, we're getting there, guys. Like, mm-hmm. going from, I started following Oculus back in, like, 20, uh, I want to say 2011. Mm-hmm. Like, when they first founded their uh, their group, before, way before uh, Facebook <laughs> even bought them. And I was like, yeah, I can't wait to see where this stuff goes. And then literally 2019 happens, and I put it on, I was like, it's happening. <laughs> it's, uh, I remember Dumpy Going Elephants. Do you remember that? No. Dumpy Going Elephants was a game. Where you put it on, you just have yes. a trunk, and you're just like, and that was like mind blowing. I think, blowing I, think I, I think I saw, uh, I think I saw Jack Septic. I play that once. Yeah. yeah, that was that was hilarious. And you're just trunks, just like yeah. slapping just everything. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard of that. It's a stupid game. It's a Dude, trip, man. <laughs> back when the Oculus One came out, you know, mm-hmm. people were just making whatever because mm-hmm. they were just playing around. Like, yeah. what can we do with this? And someone just made an on the rails type thing. Super weird elephants. Weird looking humanoid figures and just it was very much based. like an acid trip almost it was <laughs> it was very, very trip yeah, yeah it was very psychedelic experience. yeah the, I think my first one was when Oculus was doing that uh, I guess cross promotion thing with Interstellar and they huh. set up these Oculus basically setups like at the movie theater that you would go there and line up and then you would go into the, the, the space shuttle interstellar. Oh, that's cool. And it's just one of those things where you're like, I see the – it's not there yet, mm. but I see the potential. And that was like the graphics weren't very good. Uh, you know, you had to sit in this thing and it, you had to like – you know what I mean? There was so much, uh, I guess, what they call friction in order to get this thing. But now with the Oculus Quest, it's like, it's like almost as easy as your cell phone, right? You just yeah. pop it on, press one button, you're, you're yeah. in there. I Pretty mean, much. Some concepts just work so well with VR, like Super Hot, for instance. That's one of those games that I can sit, I can play for, I can play Super Hot for hours, man. Mm-hmm. And like the, the eye strain doesn't even bother me because I'm so immersed in that world that I don't even notice that my eyes are bleeding. <laughs> you know, it's, that's how much fun I have. Nice. Um, let's see, what else do we got in here? Uh, EA cancels NBA Live 20. 
because they're raking in money from NBA uh, 2K20 right now. Like, uh, I mean, what are you talking about? No, no, EA canceled NBA Live 20 because NBA 2K20, 2K20 is a different company. Oh, okay. So they're because that's the number one selling game so far this year. Yeah. And I think EA was like, well, we're not gonna be able to compete, so they canceled the game. That makes sense. Wow. Yeah. My, my naivety, I thought it was the same company. No, <laughs> no. Sports games blow my mind. Uh, How they're always so popular. Yes. Every year, consistently, even the executives in the company must be like, they, they know, they must know it's the same game, right? <laughs> they must know. <laughs> they can't be that All stupid. we did was add a couple blades of grass extra. <laughs> they can't be. And they're just like drowning in their money. Like someone stop the dump trucks. Like I just can't fathom. They have a stature of the guy that like told them about microtransactions. They're like, oh, yeah, we pulled a stature <laughs> for this man. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, especially because it's full price, right? Because yeah. it's like it's one thing. It's like, okay, it's it's, it's a new game for the new year. Um, 20 bucks, 30 bucks or something, but it's a full on $60 game. And then they make so much money through from like the actual, like I look at FIFA, like they make so much money from their pack openings. Um, that's, that's insane. I do get the hype around it though. Like I'm, I, I enjoy a good sports game, but I'm not gonna like get hyped up over it. Um, but for people who are diehard fans of that sport, I get that as well. Cause it's, you want the, you want the updated version, you know, not for the updated game, but more so for the updated statistics as well. Yeah, it's, you want, yeah. It's like the, the iPhone hype or mm -hmm. like any yeah. new phone hype. Mm -hmm. They're like, I gotta get the new model. I gotta get all the new, there's a new player this year. Like, did you see the new features? And it's like, can I it still make phone calls? <laughs> That's all I care about. In most any other circumstance, I would say like, no offense to the people buying this. Mm -hmm. Full offense to the people buying this. You are fools. <laughs> You're being deluded. <laughs> What is wrong with you? You're fueling an industry <laughs> like this. You're perpetuating this game that is not a, there's no updates to it. It makes no sense. Why are you paying money for this? The last version was just as good. Just imagine that the numbers are different. Yeah. And Says the guy that has put hundreds of dollars into like idle clicker games. So I can't say anything. Idle here. clicker games. You know, like clicker heroes or, oh, or yeah. like a cookie clicker style games. Have you ever uh, played those? I idle heroes. Those yeah, kinds of idle things, heroes. Yeah. I, I can't say a word to anybody because I've literally sunk money into those games. Those free games They're where. They're so easy though, man. You know, like $2 gets you a bunch of gems. You're like, oh, that's a great deal. The problem a is month later, you're like, oh. As soon as you put money into it, it ruins the game. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's like this weird temptation where you're like, I want to advance a little farther, and then you put money in it, and you advance yeah. farther, and it's the exact same difficulty curve. Like it's like, like nothing changes. Point? Nothing yeah. changes. That's how. Money. That's how they get you. Yeah, it's like you have to pay money to be free to like see behind the curtain to be like, <gasps> I'm wasting my life. <laughs> and then you delete the app. Yeah. And then you get you download another one. You you pay five dollars on that one too. This one will be different. <laughs> this this yeah. one will be more fun. I've got the key. I've learned. I, th I think for me, I'm old school where I'm like, I don't play too many mobile games because I'm like, it's going to eat away at my battery life. So I'm like, I just I just don't do it yeah. and then play, play on the mm -hmm. consoles. I don't know. When it comes to mobile games, the only ones I really enjoy to really usually card games like Hearthstone. Hearthstone's nice on mobile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, I mean, I'll also same for me. It's, they're just so addictive, man. Those, those, those clicker games, those idle clicker games. Is, uh, it, is it low... Isn't energy it, in, in terms like, of like yeah, in 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 there, getting there the is game. nothing to these games, nothing. Dennis. Let me tell you right now, there okay. is it's like Flappy Bird, yeah, but yeah. but for some reason people play the crap out of Flappy oh, Bird. There's nothing Bird to is it. So much more involved than a clicker game. <laughs> you actually have to press a button at the time. Clicker idle games are just meant to do without you. You are trying to set it up so that it goes faster when you're not there. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's it. You get bigger numbers. I mean, is it? It's something like like you're clicking, right? You're tapping on your screen, for uh, instance, to get money. But then you're upgrading other stuff so that when you're not using your phone, when you're not tapping the screen, you have other people running your apps running in the background, if you will, like making money. So when you come back, you have more money to spend on the thing to make it even faster to make even more money. money. There's, mean, there's where no does, end goal. <laughs> where where does Fallout Shelter end? Um, <laughs> like in this kind of type of game? Not the same. Yeah, not the same. Not the same. Yeah. Yeah. Fallout Shelter was uh, that was that was just a hands down good game as well. Like towards the and you can, uh, how, how do you feel about that one? <laughs> no, the game's fine. I'm just going to break this down okay. to you real easy. You click a button, you get a dollar. Okay? okay. You can spend $10 to get a machine that will click the button at once every five seconds for you. But you can still click the button. 
So then you can spend another $10 to get a machine that goes 10% faster at clicking the button. And okay. That, this is machine. literally a dentist. And then you spend ten more dollars. You got that ten dollars faster to spend ten dollars on a machine. I, th- I that think gives my you mind's more. being blown right now. And then once you happen to that, it suddenly the machines are going faster than you can click, but you can still click because you can spend a hundred dollars to upgrade how much money you get on a click. So now your clicks are worth more, and then their clicking are worth more, and then it's all working together, and then you're making so much money. <laughs> And then you spend five dollars because you want more. <laughs> so this is like basically an infinite loop. Of, oh yeah, of a game. It's it never ends. An infinite okay. addictive loop. Like yeah. you may as well just rename this podcast now to Dennis learns about RPG clickers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> idle clickers. Yeah, I, I think that's uh, blowing my mind. Yeah. So I can't say anything about people that love sports game. I apologize. But I, I don't understand the I, I don't understand the money that they spend on that. But like once again, I guess like you said, I, I spend my money on things like that too. But not to that extent. Like some people spend hundreds upon hundreds of dollars opening up these packs um, that are basically like fucking uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like su- sorry, surprise mechanics mm-hmm. is what game developers are calling them now uh, it's instead of gambling. But surprise, yeah. Surprise, yeah, surprise yeah. mechanics. <laughs> surprise, you have no money. <laughs> surprise, yeah. surprise, you didn't get the item you wanted. You want to buy another pack? <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, I think that's it for this episode. I want to remind people to check out a heist with Markiplier uh, on YouTube. It's totally free. Free. Free to play. Best price there is. Free. Yes, free. And there's no surprise mechanics whatsoever in this. <laughs> surprise. Well, there's some surprises. Well, but surprises, but not. You they know, won't. They won't cost you money. Won't cost you money, and there's no gambling involved. Mm-hmm. And you can get various different endings. Watch a lot of different videos of. Different types. I, I think that was the yeah the most surprising to me because when I first started to play it, I was like, okay, this is gonna go down this path, and then this one will go down. A vi- uh, but the mm-hmm. I think the variance in where it goes is so big that it's like, oh, you have to check out yeah every different path you possibly can. Thank you. Nice. Um, and what are what what's uh, your Instagram, your Twitter for all the people listening? All or watching? Markiplier. It's spelled M A R K I P L I E R. Are you are you big uh, doing all the other social media stuff, or are you more on YouTube? Dude, I'm huge everywhere. Okay. No, no, no. I, I just I tweet sometimes. I do Instagram sometimes. I, I do it whenever I feel like it. Because I always find like some people like they. They do, like, one of the things more than the other, you know? One mm-hmm. platform is more, you know, like a Twitter, Instagram. I try whatever. to spread it around, but social media, it's such a poison. Like, I, I don't uh-huh. know. It's just I hate it inherently, uh-huh. but I know the value of it, so I'm caught in this weird end of sure, Surely there's got to be some kind of, like, website or app that you can go on where it's, like, it just posts to all your accounts for you, <laughs> so you don't have – it's way less stress. No, you can't do that because each platform has its own culture. Yeah, and oh, yeah you have to cater to the culture, and you have to – a different fan bases all that. Too, yeah. too bad there's not an idle clicker for that, right? <laughs> like they just automatically like sends your your tweets, you know, your your Instagram, you your just, Facebook. You just gave some kid in the basement a brilliant idea, Dennis. Yeah. <laughs> you're well, going to see it on the App Store soon. Well, the biggest tragedy is all social media is like a clicker game. You're just after more numbers, and the more numbers you have, the, yeah. they can help spread your word better than you could by yourself. But then Damn. all the numbers just reach for more numbers, and it's an ever-perpetuating <laughs> cycle of... Um, <sighs> let's, uh, on a positive note, uh, yeah. uh, The Witcher. <laughs> um, uh, uh, we got we got a trailer for The Witcher that came out today. Um, oh. So yeah, very, I'm looking forward to that. That's gonna be good. Okay. Yeah, um, I haven't seen it yet because I've been uh, the, 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 busy. Fight, the fight scenes look good. I'll, okay, I will say that it's it's a lot more promising. I'm a lot more excited for The Witcher series now. Uh, do you a fan of The Witcher at all? I've never played. I know a lot about it, but I've well, never the series the is based on the books, so you don't have to have played the games, never which is mind. great news. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that was the one thing we didn't bring up. I just oh, didn't yeah. bring it up, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I want to definitely check that out. I think that's coming out fairly it's soon. soon. Yeah. November, isn't it? I or think er- so. Or either early December or end of November. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So, uh, Josh, where can people find you? You guys can find me on Instagram at josh.toki and Twitch at josh underscore toki. And you guys can find me on Twitter. I think here are Instagram, dennis.tzng. Make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Collider Games. Also, subscribe to our Collider podcast feed. That's the factory feed for this every single week. I want to thank Markiplier for joining us today. And make sure to check out A Heist with Markiplier. It's out now and totally free on YouTube. You have no excuse. It's true.